This video is brought to you by Jewel of the Indigo Isles, written by Paizo veterans Patrick Rennie, Ron Lundeen, and Linda Zayas Palmer. Jewel of the Indigo Isles includes seven new playable ancestries and enough adventure to take players from 1st to 11th level. Order now at Battlezoo.com. Hey everybody, Dave here with another Pathfinder rule reminder for you, and today's topic is going to address some of the criticisms, comments, concerns that came up following my previous video this week about the troop rules that are found in Bestiary 3. Now, if you haven't already seen that video, I would encourage you to check that out first, but some people in the comments pointed out a few flaws in that plan, notably things like the rules for their movement can be a little cumbersome, especially with the weird formations that they can, they can create. Uh, the troops have an ability called form up that allows them to shift their formation on the field, but that does not provoke any attacks of opportunity, which was, or any other kinds of reactions, which was uh, a little bit jarring to some of the, uh, the the player base to have you know 16 individual soldiers be able to move around you freely without provoking any reactions was odd. Uh, another issue was you could put you could shape the troop in such a way that um, that you would have multiple individuals surrounding a player but they wouldn't actually get any flanking bonuses because to flank it has to be you and another creature and troops are considered one creature it cannot flank with itself so what i wanted to offer today is a house rule that i have used for uh, you know probably close to 10 years now that addresses some of these concerns and, and this called the dirty minion rules and dirty minion rules were created not by me but by our friends over at the order 66 podcast uh gm dave and gm chris uh many years ago this was their saga edition star wars saga edition podcast created a rule to um to basically allow individuals to function similar to the way minions are handled in 4th edition D&D. So even though these rules were originally created as a house rule to Star Wars Saga Edition, that is a D20 based role-playing game. It is derived from 3rd edition D&D just like Pathfinder 1st edition was and now Pathfinder 2nd edition. I've used these rules with a lot of success in Star Wars Saga Edition and Pathfinder 1st Edition. I've only used them one time in Pathfinder 2nd Edition though, and it was very successful. The, the encounter worked great, the players had a lot of fun, but I do just want to, to give the disclaimer and the caveat that we're talking about a very small sample size for a house rule here, so your mileage may vary. But essentially what dirty minions are is you take any single creature from an encounter. So if you design an encounter to have uh, three city guards and a city guard sergeant that is one level higher than the city guards, like maybe that is the balanced, uh, the balance for your, your for your uh, encounter with your players. What you do is any of those that you want to turn into minions, you multiply by six. Okay, so we have that, that scenario if you have three regular city guards that are of an appropriate level for your, for your players and a city guard sergeant, we take the three city guards and we churn them from three into 18. We multiply them by six. So now we have a pool of 18 city guards and one sergeant that's commanding them. Now, these do not form a troop or a swarm or anything like that. They are going to operate independently as you would any other creature in the encounter. But the twist is those dirty minions only have one hit point each, meaning all it takes is one hit from any attack and they go down. Otherwise, their stats are unchanged. All of the dirty minions have the same uh, saving throws, armor class, attack bonuses, damage, everything else is the same as a regular city guard in this case, but they only have one hit point. And in order to inflict any damage on them, it has to be the result of either a successful attack roll against them or a failed savings throw. 
So if someone casts Fireball at that group, the people who fail their saving throws, they all just instantly die. But anybody who succeeded their, their saving throw suffer no damage at all. In order to apply damage to a dirty minion, you have to either succeed on an attack roll against them or they have to fail a saving throw. This also means that they're completely immune to things like splash damage because there is no role associated with that. And what this does is this creates a narrative moment where your players are overwhelmed by adversaries. And it's that scene in any major movie, any major fantasy movie where the heroes are just hacking and slashing and weeding them their way through a large horde of foes that all go down with one hit, but these these dirty minions, these foes still have the same the same ability to attack. So they hit as hard as a regular version of them, but they go down super, super easy. So where I've used these rules in the past, uh, Star Wars Saga Edition had an encounter where the players were being boarded by pirates and before the, the living pirates wanted to come through the tube to assault the player's ship, they sent in all of their junk droids and they had uh, you know, uh, probably 18 of these junk droids that just kept coming through the gangway and the players were on the other end round after round, wave after wave dealing with them uh, until they had until they had uh, destroyed all of the drunk dro junk droids coming through, which was a great moment in the narrative. The players had a lot of fun. They felt pushed. They felt tasked. They had this sensation of when is this this horde going to run out? Um, and they didn't feel like because the enemies were nothing but but one CR foes that you know they weren't a credible threat because they were. That's the way I usually use them. I, if I had, if, if, if I if I had um, 18 of these dirty minions, I wouldn't. I typically don't put them all on the map at the same time, because uh, mostly I don't want to have to manage 18 different uh, individual monsters in my initiative tracker and so forth. And also, they each get three actions each. You got 18 that could conceivably do three attacks each round. That might get a little cumbersome. So what I tend to do is create a scenario where a little bit comes through at a time. And even if I had them all on the map at once, you know, maybe the ones in the back don't have a ranged attack. You got to wait for them to get up close to do something. But at any rate, uh, the dirty minion rules. Yes, uh, house rule that was originally created for Star Wars Saga Edition has been used in Pathfinder First Edition. It's been used in D&D Third and 3.5. And I've used it one time with success in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. All you do is you build your encounter as normal. And any of those creatures that you want to turn into dirty minions, you multiply by 6. You give them one hit point each. And they can only suffer damage on the result of either a successful attack targeting them or a failed savings throw. Uh, in closing, I will also say that uh, there will be a portion of the audience who just don't like the fact that you might have a seventh level, uh, you know, orc soldier that only has one hit point. It can be a little bit um, immersion breaking for some people. Um, my players, well, first of all, I never tell my players that they're facing dirty minions who only have one hit point. They don't know that. They, all they know is these things come at them and they go down real fast, but they also hit really hard. But largely they focus on the narrative, what's happening in the scene, and don't get hung up on mechanical matters of, of hit points and relative levels and so forth. Uh, but I just want to say that I do recognize that there are a lot of people who really, really, really did not like the 4th edition minion rules because of that. Uh, so every group is different. Your table might be different than mine, but mine, uh, first of all, I don't think realize <laughs> that they're fighting dirty minions and I don't think they would have an issue with it anyway because of the narrative theme that's being addressed. So that's it for today. If you have any questions about this, please leave those in the comments. If you test drive this system in Pathfinder 2nd Edition and give us a few more samples to work with beyond my one in this system, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear how it works for you. And as always, I want to say thank you to everybody out there who's of course me, whether that's
podcast. If you're liking the video, subscribing to the channel, subscribing to the Patreon. Thank you so much for everything you folks do. And with that, thanks for watching, take care, and happy gaming.